In today's video, you're gonna learn how to set up a modern worship keys rig at your church for 2020. We're gonna talk you through picking the right software, finding a computer you need, explain how to connect all of the MIDI hardware and audio hardware, and set you on the path to success in implementing this, whether you're the worship leader or the keys volunteer. You're gonna leave this video knowing the exact steps you need to take to modernize your worship keys sound with a brand new keys rig. Let's check it out. So when it comes time to put together a worship keys rig, before we dive into all of the hardware and the software, the nuts and bolts of what it really means to put a worship keys rig in place for your worship team, I want to identify why and, and what we're really trying to achieve here. And the most important thing about any worship keys rig is how it sounds. If it doesn't sound good, then you really haven't achieved the main goal. It could be easy to use, it could look really nice, you could have done it as affordably as possible, but if it doesn't sound good, then is it really adding or making an impact on your worship team? So let me start off by just talking about some go-to common types of worship sound because the purpose of setting up a computer-based keys rig is to give you these sounds at your fingertips. So let's start off with one of the meat and potatoes sounds, just a standard acoustic piano sound. Now don't get too hung up on the nuances of different piano plugins or different types of pianos. It's the most important thing that you have one or two great go-to piano sounds. And then once you get those dialed in, you can go crazy with different plugins and levels of nuance. Let me show you what some go-to worship piano sounds might sound like. Now sometimes you might want to mix it up and leave that acoustic piano sound out of the mix. That's a perfect time to introduce an electric piano. And then there's tons of different classic electric piano sounds like Rhodes, Wurlitzer, and all sorts of other digital electric pianos. You can really choose the flavor that makes the most sense for you here, but something that sounds classic and can complement or contrast against your acoustic pianos. Let's talk about worship pads. You've got your piano sound dialed in and oftentimes you're gonna be layering a piano and pad sound together. Now, just like pianos, there's tons and tons of different pad sounds available, but the most important thing is you wanna have a go-to worship pad or two that can glue the sound of your whole band together. Let me show you a couple go-to worship pad sounds. Now, a lot of keyboardists aren't as comfortable or confident with how to approach playing an organ, but in a modern worship context, oftentimes classic organ sounds are being used to fill out or replace what you'd maybe play with a worship pad sound otherwise. So let me give you a couple examples. The first is gonna be of a little bit more of a traditional Hammond B3 organ sound that really sounds like an organ. And then the second one's gonna have a little bit more ambience. It's really functioning as a pad with an organ flavor.
Now the category of synth leaves is probably one of the most wide open and hard to identify categories of key sounds because really anything can be a lead if you play it like a lead sound. It could be really bright, like electronic music focused, or it could be ambient. Generally, it's just taking up higher frequency range space and it's playing on top of what everybody else is doing. Here's a couple examples, one that's sort of electronic music focused and then one that's really ambient that you could layer in with a piano and pad. Now let's talk about arpeggiated sounds. Arpeggiated sounds lock into the BPM of the song that you're playing. These are all over tons and tons of modern worship songs from Hillsong, Elevation, and Bethel. It's really important that your band is playing to a click so that you can actually nail these sounds live. Otherwise, you're gonna be fighting with your drummer or your worship leader over who's in control of the tempo. So if your band plays to a click, it can be an awesome idea to introduce arpeggiated BPM locked sounds. Otherwise, I would recommend that you don't give it a try until your band is ready to play to a metronome. Now there's all sorts of different arpeggiated sounds. There's chord arps that sort of pulse underneath everything you're doing, and then there's arps that cycle through notes in a pattern as you play. Here's a couple examples. Now let's talk about what may be my favorite way to add extra energy to a song as the worship keys player. I'm talking about synth bass sounds. Now oftentimes I run into keyboard players who are really uncomfortable with doing bass sounds because they don't wanna step on the toes of their band's bass player. And first off, I think that's great that you're trying really hard to respect the other members of your band and not step on their toes. But I'd encourage you to listen to modern worship music and notice the way that real or acoustic bass sounds are being mixed in with synth bass. Honestly, if you have a good sound system with nice subs, adding in some bass tones from the keyboard is an amazing way to take the sound of your band to the next level. Here's a couple examples. Now the reason it's so important to identify the individual instruments that make up so much of modern worship music is so that you can take these individual ingredients and combine them together to create layered patches that have all these elements into one playable sound. So for this example, I've got a few different types of pads along with the worship piano. With all of these instruments layered together, I can fill just the right amount of space for a down-tempo worship song. Now here's another example of a layered worship patch that combines some of these individual ingredients that make up so much of modern worship music. In this patch, I have an organ sound, I've got a couple of pads, I've got a pulsing arpeggiated sound, and a synth lead. Let me show you.
right, so now that we know where we're trying to go, the sounds that we're trying to create and make a part of our keys rig, let's talk about how we can get there. Now, this video is gonna focus on software-based approaches to setting up your worship keys rig. And there are two main softwares that we recommend you consider as you're approaching setting up your keys rig in 2020. To start off with, let's talk about MainStage 3. MainStage 3 is a software developed by Apple. It's only available on Mac computers and it's $30 in the App Store. MainStage is an amazing value that comes with tons and tons of built-in sounds in its factory sound library. Now, one of the big things that causes some people to not be able to implement MainStage is the fact that you have to own a Mac computer. It won't run on your iPad and it won't run on a Windows machine. You have to have a Mac. But if you already own a Mac, whether it be a laptop or a Mac mini, MainStage being only $30 on top of the investment in the hardware means oftentimes this is the cheapest way for you to get awesome worship key sounds out of your computer. Now we love MainStage. We create all sorts of resources for this software. It's really designed for live performance and it has lots of tools to make it easy for you to set up a great keys rig. There's simple patch management. You can create a custom workspace on screen that mirrors the visual of your MIDI hardware. And again, as I mentioned, it's only $30. So MainStage can be an awesome option. Now, a couple things to consider. One, the cost of buying a Mac computer is pretty darn high if you don't already have one. MainStage can also be at times a little less reliable than some folks would like. It can use a large bit of your computer's resources so if you have an older or less powerful Mac computer, you're gonna have to do a lot of optimizing to make sure that your rig is set up to be reliable. MainStage also isn't really able to do some of the more complicated automation tasks that software like Ableton Live really excels at. So if you're looking to control lighting or lyrics on screen from your keys software, then MainStage is definitely not the way to go. It's possible to run your backing tracks in MainStage, but I think Ableton Live has the edge there in ease of setup. So that's a little bit about MainStage 3. It's the software that I use most of the time when I do perform live, and I think it's a great option for Worship Keys players. Next, let's talk about the other option I think you should consider, Ableton Live. Now, Ableton Live can run on both Mac and Windows systems, and on both systems, it runs really well. Ableton Live is rock solid reliable, which is one of the biggest reasons that I see folks choosing to use Ableton Live. Now, Ableton's a good bit more expensive, even for the intro version at $70 more than MainStage. And you don't get a big factory sound library included with Ableton unless you spend seven or $800 on the suite version. So MainStage has a big advantage when it comes to the value you get for the price, because if you want modern worship key sounds out of Ableton, you're gonna have to spend more money for the suite version, buy a third-party plugin that gives you the sounds that you need, or do a bunch of programming behind the scenes to squeeze out the worship key sounds that you want from Ableton Live's factory sound library. So that's something for you to consider, but I cannot emphasize enough how well suited for live performance Ableton Live is when it comes to reliability. You can run your keys rig, you can run your backing tracks, you can run lyric and lighting automation all from one computer. Even if it's not a very powerful computer, you're still probably gonna be able to do it because Ableton Live is just so fast, efficient, and reliable. Another great thing about Ableton Live is that it does come with a good piano sound, even at the lowest price point intro level of Ableton Live. So if you want rock solid reliability, maybe you wanna run some automation or some backing tracks, and you're willing to spend a little bit more money, Ableton Live can be a great option for you. It's also the only option that I would recommend if you're running a Windows-based setup. MainStage 3 and Ableton Live are both amazing pieces of software and it's possible to set up great worship keys rigs in both. The last thing I'll say about Ableton Live is that it can be a little bit more intimidating and less user-friendly because it's not as visual in nature as MainStage 3. It looks a lot more like a spreadsheet and you have to kind of dig deep into the programming to see what you're wanting to see. Whereas in MainStage 3, you can put any information you want anywhere on the screen because of the customizable workspace. All right, so the reason we talked about software before hardware is that choosing the software you want to use 
can inform the hardware choices you make after the fact. This is gonna dictate the type of computer you need, the type of MIDI controllers you might want to invest in, figure out the software that you're going to be using to get these sounds, and then build your hardware rig around the software. So let's get into some of the specifics of the hardware you'll need to set up a Worship Keys rig. All right, so let's start off by talking about the basic ingredient you need to tell your computer what you wanna do. That's your MIDI keyboard. Now there's tons and tons of different MIDI keyboards available online, and uh, there's good ones, there's bad ones, there's cheap ones, there's ultra expensive ones. The main thing I want you to know is that if your keyboard is less than 40 years old, the existing keyboard that's already at your church, maybe it's tucked away in a closet, maybe it never gets played, you can almost definitely use that as your MIDI controller without having to buy anything new other than a little adapter cable that plugs into the back of your keyboard and then connects to your computer. We'll put a link in the description of this video to a MIDI to USB adapter. Now, if you decide to use your existing MIDI keyboard as your controller, then I'd recommend looking into something that can sit on top of or next to your MIDI keyboard to give you some extra functionality. This is probably my favorite MIDI controller available on the market. It's the Korg Nano Control 2. It's available for only 50 or $60 online. It has tons of knobs, faders, and buttons that you can connect to Ableton or to Mainstage to give you tactile control of the parameters that are most important to you for live performance. You wanna make sure that you don't feel super disconnected from the software that you're using and being able to map the most important controls like the brightness or volume of a sound to something that you can actually touch reliably during a live performance goes a long way. All right, next up, let's talk about the one area of your keys rig that I truly don't believe you should scrimp on. The computer that you use as the brain of your worship keys rig is so important. Now, if you've ever used a hardware workstation keyboard, that keyboard really does have a computer inside of it acting as the brain of the keys rig. It's playing the notes, it's processing the data, and then outputting the audio. It's just all built into that keyboard. And hardware keyboard manufacturers make sure that the brain or the computer inside of that keyboard is up to the task of doing whatever that keyboard is designed to do, whether that's playing four sounds at once, whether that's playing 10 notes at once. It's designed to be able to do that 100% of the time with 100% reliability. Now, folks that come from the world of hardware keyboards often don't take into consideration that they might not be able to ask the same things of the computer that they already have. Because every computer is different, every keys rig is different, it's possible to ask your computer to do more than it's capable of. Now this can lead to lots of frustration and can be the reason that some people give up on the software-based approach entirely. It can lead to problems like audio dropouts, big crashes or freezes during the middle of an important song or service, and you wanna make sure that it's not a problem that holds you back from achieving the results that you need. So again, this is why I say that if you're not gonna scrimp on one element of your Worship Keys rig, make sure that you have a computer that's up to the task. Now, in the description, we'll include a link to some resources that will help demystify the different hardware components of a computer. They'll let you know which features are the most important and which different types of specs might not matter as much for live audio applications. Now, if you already have a computer and you're not sure if it's up to the task, I would recommend giving the software that you wanna use a try in a practice environment because there might be some simple optimizations you can make to use the gear you have. The next step is figuring how to get the audio from your computer to your soundboard in a way that has high quality and gives you consistent results. And there's two main options here. You can use the built-in headphone jack on your computer with a little adapter cable, and then plug that into the soundboard via an instrument cable or XLR cable or you can invest in an external audio interface. Audio interfaces are little boxes with a built-in sound card, usually some high quality outputs. They connect to your computer over USB or maybe a Firewire cable, and then you plug the outs of the audio interface into your soundboard. Now, if you're just starting out with your keys rig that's software based, or if you're on a tight budget, most folks can get good results from the headphone jack. 
but I'm a big fan of investing in the long term in a high quality audio interface because it's isolated from the rest of your computer audio. So if you forget to turn off notifications, your phone ringing isn't gonna go through the sound system. Generally, the outputs on an external audio interface are a little bit higher quality and it's less prone to buzz, hum, or interference. I cannot recommend enough, buy a laptop stand. Don't just put your multi-thousand dollar computer on a music stand that isn't meant to hold your laptop reliably. For 30 to $50, you can invest in something that's designed to hold your computer for live performance. It's way harder to tip over. It's not gonna collapse during a live performance. Protect your investment in the gear that you have with a laptop stand. Now, if you need some really concrete recommendations for the gear that you need, we're gonna to put together two different pricing tiers, an entry level and a mid level, entirely comprehensive gear list. We're gonna have computers, keyboards, audio interfaces, cables, everything that you need to build a computer-based keys rig from scratch. So you can check out both the entry level and mid level tier links in the description. All right, so now let's talk about execution. We've got the software selected, we've got the hardware, we've ordered everything, it's all come in the mail, we've put the keys rig together. This is where a lot of folks stop and they think that their work of putting their keys rig together is done. But honestly, I think you're only about halfway there. So let's talk about how to transition you or your worship team to a software-based keys rig. So I think it's really important when you start to make the transition to a software-based keys rig to have really clear expectations of where you're trying to go. So if you're the worship leader at your church or if you're a member of the worship team, either way, there should be a conversation between the keys players and the worship leader to set the expectations. Identify the types of sounds that you're trying to get yet. Teach your keys players or show your worship leader the sounds that you do have and make sure that there's common terminology. Make sure that when your worship leader says piano and pad, that the keys players on your team know what that means. Make sure that when your keys player says the word bright, your worship leader has a similar understanding of that word uh, that your keys players do. Now, if you're trying to transition your keys volunteers who are used to a hardware keyboard, you wanna approach this in baby steps. Make sure that you don't just have the rig set up when somebody shows up on a Sunday morning and say, hey, you're doing this now, here's all this new technology. That's not gonna set them up for success. They're not gonna feel in control of the software. So I'd recommend setting up your keys rig for a midweek rehearsal or maybe even having a little bit of a time separated out from a band rehearsal where all the keys players on your team can get a little bit more comfortable. You can walk them through the software, tell them what the software is called, show them how to open it so that if it crashes, they can open it again. Lay down some baseline knowledge of how all of this stuff works. And then when you're ready to introduce it, don't introduce it on Christmas Eve or Easter Sunday. Do it during a low key season in your church where there's lots of room for learning along the way, for making mistakes, for improving. Maybe start off with simple sounds like a piano, and a pad and then you can start to introduce more complexity and more diverse types of sounds as you and your team get more comfortable. The other key person that often doesn't get looped into the conversation of how and why you're setting up a software keys rig is your front of house audio engineer. When it comes down to it, that's such an important relationship that dictates whether or not you're heard and whether or not what you're playing comes across well. So make sure as you get your hardware and software plugged in that you have multiple conversations with your front of house to make sure that they understand what you're doing, make sure they understand why you're doing it, and they understand how it works. Make sure they know the audio signal path so that they can help you or volunteers make sure the audio sounds great. Now, if you need more help setting up your own worship keys rig, check out the description for all the links to the resources mentioned throughout this video. If you have a specific question, leave a comment and let us know, we would love to help. Make sure to subscribe if you are a worship musician because we have lots of great videos coming this year to help you play worship keys better. Thanks for watching.